Welcome in everyone to another edition of the Bully the Board weekly college football board meeting. As always, it's Kevin, Seth, and Steve with you. We have two words and two words only. Rivalry week, baby. We got a lot to break down, so let's get into it. Give a damn about a hater when I feel like it. Not today, not today, not today, not tomorrow. Get out my way, please. I'm trying to get paid. Not today, not today. Uh, Steve, yes, they are. Uh, so I, for my money, the only two, the only better phrase, the only two better words in sports, in my opinion, might be March Madness. Rivalry Week is probably the second. I don't know about you guys. Where, where, how do, how do you stack those two up? Yeah, I think I would, I would rank them the same with you. Okay. Oh, I would, man. I would go Rivalry Week, Game Seven, March Madness. That, that would be my, my top. Ooh, three. forgot about Game Seven. Okay. Although, yeah, yeah actually, I reorder because football is better than basketball. So I go, I'll go reverse order. And, and then next year, when we have a 12 game playoff, that's my new March Madness. It's going to be December Ooh, Madness or whenever yeah. they do it. That's true. They got to they got to come up with something catchy for sure. That's going to be oh my god, euphoria, baby. So yeah, we are here, ladies and gentlemen. Rivalry Week is finally here. A lot, a lot of potential major, major implications depending on how some of these yeah. matchups shake out. So um, last we week of few... the season, last week, last of the week season, we, like, it's came, wild. Like that flew by. That was insane. Yeah. Yeah, and we're we're not we're not quite there yet. I mean, we're not quite there. There's still a lot yeah. to happen in just even this is, the next. Few this weeks. is arguably the biggest week. We're going to learn a lot. Yeah. Yes, we are. The next two right. weeks basically is like jam packed. For sure. Yeah. For sure. So let's do it. How about it? Let's get to some power five breakdowns then. So don't, don't, don't care where we start, but let's just, let's go, let's go from the top. Uh, ACC. How about that? Um, really? I mean, we'll talk about a couple of key matchups R. later R. on man. in the, uh, yeah, later on in the uh, show here, but RIP Jordan, Jordan Travis, man, how absolutely tragic, but now, how how is the taking there for Louisville? What do you guys think? I think Louisville is. We look back, man. Why did Louisville have to lose against Pitt? And and you know the question becomes, how did they lose against Pitt? But I think you know we'll see. This Jordan Travis injury is obviously quite important. Yeah, they're going against an SEC team in Florida. That's good. It's a rivalry game. That's still not a shoe and win. But I don't know. I mean, let's play this out. You have a Louisville win. Um, you know, this week against Kentucky, which is big, you know, their own SEC win. So let's say they beat Louisville. I think that there's no way they can jump. Like so much chaos would have to happen for them to get in that. I think it's unfortunate that they had this loss, because if not, I think we could be talking about a Louisville in the playoff. Sure. Yeah. I mean, not minutes before yeah. we started recording the the updated CFP rankings came out. So Louisville <laughs> sits at number 10. In, yeah. in the ranking so yeah you're right there's a lot a lot of traffic in front of them where yeah uh, you you need help for sure but i mean shout out to, shout out to them still like the fact that they're we're even here talking about them as a as a potential maybe even though a few things have to Agreed. happen type of thing like that's awesome that's dope yeah well i, I think unfortunately i mean i, I echo seth's theme because i don't think there's any way in hell we will get in because there's there's so yeah. much ridiculousness that 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 is really like this would have been the year for the 12 team playoff right because yeah. you think about it right now is a one loss Louisville team better than a one loss oregon texas or bama right and maybe then, texas and then, maybe texas the notre dame maybe, win is impressive to me yeah, but but now by now here's the problem though, right? So to your point, you need everyone to lose. Yeah. And is a one loss Louisville team better than a one loss Ohio State or Michigan team? And not to mention, yeah. if Alabama beats Georgia, I'm not trying to jump conferences, but if Alabama beats yeah. Georgia, yeah, 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 yeah. You have a one loss Bama, yeah. one loss one Georgia, Georgia. Right. And then if Oregon beats Washington, now you have a one loss Washington yeah. and the one loss. Yeah, no, no, like, it's not gonna happen. But yeah, you're yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's and it's 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 meaningless because they didn't need to lose to Pitt. Like they yeah. should not have lost that game, um, yeah. and that's what could have been though. Ball. What really what could have been for the ACC yeah. is kind of is kind of the theme, unfortunately. So, but yeah. but Steve is right. Like this is this is shaping up though to see how we're going to kind of or how the committee is going to handle a 12, game, 12 team playoff. And to be honest, I'm I'm liking. We're going to talk about that in the next section. But like I'm liking the decisions they're making to give us a pretty strong top 12 right and and i think louisville for sure would deserve to be in that top 12 um and and i would be really competitive um so yeah it's yeah, an unfortunate just, win just, but i don't think just, yeah what well, they're you're too early that's yeah, just a, yeah, too yeah, early. yeah, yeah. So, but <laughs> hey man that's good like if they got enough young 
I mean, I think they had a fair amount of returners this year. If they can do that one more time, I mean, this could be a really, really strong Louisville team. I mean, it was a really strong Louisville, t- Louisville team. Yeah, fair. Okay, Big Ten. How about it? Uh, obviously, the the game, the matchup coming up, right, with between Ohio State and Michigan. So that that's obviously the storyline in that conference um, at the moment. And really, how that game plays out, we'll, we're going to talk about that game more in depth. So, I mean, I don't yeah. know. What else you guys want to break down with the Big Ten other than the game? Because it's – Yeah. It, well, I think I was going to get in. They're going to get into the, the – um, not in the playoff, but into the Big Ten championship. They're going to get slaughtered. I will. I want to pose this question. Yeah. I want to pose this question to you guys, though. Is this a must win for Michigan? Because I feel like if they don't win, they, they're the team that's going to get out, be out. Especially now with Jordan Travis being injured and they have officially moved the um, – they've moved Florida out of the top five or top four. I think the, the resume just isn't – even though they've dominated, I don't think they're going to give them the credit. And I think Ohio State can get in with one loss, but I don't know that Michigan can with kind of what we're shaping up to have. Yeah, I think if it's a close game, I think they can afford this loss. And here's why: because who are you losing losing against? You're losing against the number two team in the country. Fair. Now, 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 to be fair, you know, to to play devil's advocate to my own point, we didn't see that same sort of logic apply to Washington after they beat Oregon. They really didn't jump all that all that much, even though Oregon was a top ten team. So, yeah, I'm with you. On well, that, that, that was but, before they ranked. They, there was no rankings well, yet at that point. Okay, well, they, so got, they, well, they ranked them six, six, and then five for Washington. Yeah, and I guess I'm thinking about top 25, but yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, no, and, and I, I hear you, though, but I guess for me, I, I still think Pac-12 is going to work against itself, right? And, and this assumes Washington's win, right? Washington beats Oregon, boom, Oregon's out, so then is Michigan, one loss Michigan, worse than the one loss Texas. I think who, who you have to be concerned about, if, Washington, if Michigan loses, I think they still get in as long as Oregon loses to Washington and as long as Georgia beats Bama. If Bama beats Georgia, all hell breaks loose. And then you're right, Seth. I'd be very worried about Ohio State or Michigan being a one-loss team and getting yeah. two SEC teams in there. Yeah. And I, it seems like they're they're kind of telling us that they like what Ohio State's done. And mm-hmm. they obviously feel reluctant to do that a little bit, I guess, for Michigan. I just feel – I don't know how we're – yeah, it'll be really interesting. Obviously, they're both – both of these teams are looking at this as a must-win. Um, They're not right. you know saying, well, we can sure. lose. But – I think that this truly is, in my opinion, a must win in in Michigan, and then Ohio, or like I said, you know, um, Iowa, you know, they're going to do what Iowa does, and I don't know. It'll be interesting to see, you know, this being the last week, basically, other than the Big Ten championship, like what the Big Ten does next year, because you're getting two big Pac-12 teams that'll kind of shake that up, and then, in my opinion. We're going to see a much stronger Nebraska and a much stronger Wisconsin, right? You're going to have full big name, big recruiting coaches um, have a full off year. And I think that'll kind of shape. So the big 10 next year is going to be a gauntlet, I think more so than it was this year. Yeah. And I really hope they go to the win percentage for the championship. I mean, I know disrespect to the to. Hawkeyes out there, but Iowa does not deserve to be in a championship game. I they, think they'll they think have of. 16 teams in the big 10. Yeah. Oh, something. Yeah. With the, with the new ones coming in. Yeah. I believe right now, so. They have 16. I think they have 14 right now. Yeah. And they're getting UCLA, or no, they're getting, uh, sorry, they're getting uh, Oregon and USC. I don't know if Sweet 16 is a is a trademarked phrase, but they should, they should rebrand. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, the, the NCAA doesn't seem to be very uh, giving, so I, I think they're going to be a <laughs> headlock in that. Yeah, probably. Yeah, shout out, and we're not going to talk about them, but shout out JMU, guys. I don't want to hear JMU name on this podcast or in my lives ever, 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 ever again. <laughs> All season, chirp, 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 chirp. JMU, JMU, what about JMU, JMU, JMU should be in top 25. They put them in the top 25. JMU should go to a bowl. Everyone, they go there. College game day has got your back. They go there. They they make the case. They scream it from the mountaintops. And what do you do? You shit the bed against a median app state team. Come on. Jam you, get out of here. Is You're that is that bull band just one year? Are they are they eligible Two. again next year? I think they'll be. I think it's next year they'll be eligible now because they were yeah, in last yeah. year, I believe, or something. Oh, or something yeah. But yeah. Uh, but yes. The thing is, they lost, so it wouldn't even. I mean, yeah, they're still eligible. Yeah. 
they're still bowl eligible, but they the whole thing was that they couldn't win the Sun Belt Championship or whatever. But they lost. Yeah. yeah. Cry me a river. Cry me a river, baby. All right. I think in the Big 12, you probably have a similar situation or story as with the ACC potentially. Outside looking in, I think there's the the, the top ranked team um, in terms of the CFP rankings right now is still Texas at number seven. But yeah, they're praying. To Steve's point, yeah, to Steve's point earlier, like uh, you need you need some help. There needs to be a little more chaos above you for you to for you to basically squeeze in, eke in. So they need, I don't know. You guys feel chaos above outside? and below. They need loss of, uh, before them, and they need loss to Oklahoma State so they can play Oklahoma. Yeah, I don't even know if that's possible, but they. But point being, they need to get a Big Ten <laughs> no. win that isn't Oklahoma State. I don't know if Oklahoma yeah. State is clinched yet. I think with a loss, they would. They, I think Oklahoma would now go if if we get another loss from Oklahoma State. Yeah, okay. because they're both six and two, and OK State has a tiebreaker. Yeah, yeah. So um, even if but, those two things happen, still the above, yeah, it's it's it's. I mean, Texas dire. is if Texas beats Oklahoma, that's impressive, right? To I yeah, but I don't think it's a not Oklahoma game. State, no. Oklahoma. No, I know, I know, I know, I know. But I mean, we saw Oklahoma be vulnerable here. I mean, and and football is just so unforgiving, right? I mean, every one one game you lose, every one game that doesn't go well has so much weight. But I, but you know, back to your point, stuff. I, I don't. I mean, I I put Texas in that same boat as Louisville, like. So you look, you need help below, uh, above and below, right? So if none of the top, well, if Georgia and Washington don't lose, we know Ohio State, Michigan, one of them has to lose, right? So if you're looking at that and Texas wins out, that's your best case scenario. But is a one loss Texas team better than a one loss loser of Ohio State and Michigan and Oregon? Well, I guess Oregon would have two losses then. So I think that's your your only hope, right? Because to your point about you need help below, if Bama beats Georgia, Texas is out, in my opinion. One loss Bama team is better than one loss Texas team, in my opinion. Right. And yeah. then if Oregon beats Washington, I, I I can't put Texas above both of them. So there's only four slots. So I, I don't know. Yeah. This is tough. Yeah. I mean, we're gonna talk about it here in a second, but I don't know. The Big Ten was really interesting. And Texas hasn't done what Texas normally does, which is kind of shit the bed completely. I mean, their only loss is against Oklahoma, which they Oklahoma is a, a good team. Yeah. Um, and they beat Alabama in Alabama, which which is impressive. Um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, how this shapes up. But can we talk about the plus five thousand ticket for Kansas? <laughs> I mean, yeah. it was a good yeah. bet. It was a good bet. It got RIP'd, but uh, yeah, but uh, it lasted it lasted quite a while. I don't know if there it, ever was. I don't know how no, it how came down to an injury on top of it. No, that's fair too. But uh, we would have won. You we were ever we, able to get some cash out value. Yeah, right? I was able to cash out for three dollars profit at one point. Okay, well, six dollars on my total investment, so six percent ROI on my initial investment. Yeah, got it. Right. Yeah, you, not you, really yeah. the not really the spirit of a plus five thousand bet. So <laughs> let it ride. Um, but honestly, it came down to an injury in a game. I mean, quite frankly, the right. quarterback got kicked, uh, got knocked out of a game. They came back and lost that game like by a field goal. I mean, they could have easily, easily um, won that game. And we saw they put up a, a fucking really good fight against Kansas State. I mean, so mm -hmm. we'll see. I don't know how much, uh, how many seniors are on that team this year, but assuming they're going to return just as many offensive starters, it'll still be a really good bet. So, you know, I don't regret that bet, but unfortunately, I think it is officially RIP. Yeah. 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 No. Pac-12, okay, a couple more to break down here. So we're going to, assuming assuming there's no hiccups for Oregon, because I don't know, I think really expects Washington to stumble this week, but the Civil War, Oregon versus Oregon State, you know, that's obviously a real big, real big matchup with big implica implications. So, yeah. I hope it's I hope it's a rematch of, I mean, it's going to be anyway, unless I'm, unless something weird happens, right? Oregon versus no, no. Washington. No, that that's not, that's not guaranteed. That's not guaranteed. Okay, so if, if Oregon, Oregon State Oregon beats them. And, and Arizona beats ASU. Arizona oh, is in the Pac-12 yeah. championship. Bear I see. Down. I see. Yeah. Arizona. I see. You're still you're still clean onto that dream. I They're now clinging it's on. Dream. It's clinging. one game. What do you mean? It's a two game scenario. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. 
This is what okay. hope feels like, Kevin. I mean, well, you I mean, hold on, Kevin. You just you just said it though. This it's rivalry week. This is literally the oldest rivalry in college sports. Yeah. You have Oregon State and Oregon going to different conferences next year. What more would yeah. Oregon State want than to take down Oregon one last time and kill their dreams of a CFP uh, appearance? Okay. Now listen, and I'm not right. saying that the Ryan's on the wall. Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say, no, no, you finish that thought. No, I'm saying I'm not saying the writing's on the wall, but th this is no guarantee by any stretch yeah, yeah, that Oregon's yeah. sure, going to win. Sure. Game. Well, Oregon is going to win the national championship, so maybe it is a bit of a stretch. <laughs> but the uh, the a court did rule that Oregon and Washington State are now in charge, like they own the Pac-12. So that was official ruling that I, oh, I, oh. I read came down. I believe Oregon State, Wait, Oregon State, Oregon, sorry, and, Oregon State, and yeah, Washington, Washington State. State right? Sorry, yeah, yeah, well, Oregon yeah, State, yeah. Washington State. Because those are the only two teams that didn't find a, right. a an escape route, uh, but now they're kind of in charge. Like if you really think about it, they could they could figure out how to merge with a with one or two, or be more selective and take um, or yeah. more teams. And we still we hey we still may see the Pac-12. It just is going to look very very different. But yeah, we're not going to yeah. see the rivalry. Right. Which and which is so it's just so to your point. Like what they're going to do is they're just going to absorb a big part of the Mountain West, which is what Pac-12 should have done. Yeah. From the yeah. freaking beginning, once yeah. team started instead of waiting. So, but anyway, I, I digress. Yeah, Seth, I, 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 I'm with you guys. I'm rooting for the Oregon future, but I'm not no. gonna lie. I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna be sad if Arizona gets in the Pac-12 championship. Fuck no. Fuck the future. Let's go Arizona. I'm just saying it's not gonna happen. <laughs> like, like the better side of me, like is just probabilistic that's a good bet for oregon mm -hmm. from a like let's go fandom side yeah like bear down like i hope it, i hope oregon fucking doesn't even make to the game <laughs> <laughs> but if they do i think i think it's uh, i think i think they God. win yeah yeah okay yeah unless i don't want to jump ahead because we're gonna let's we're gonna break down that matchup a little bit more in depth here in, in a bit here but um last one we didn't talk about too much uh the sec so Iron Bowl with Alabama and Auburn, obviously, this week. So yeah. that's really the only potential for any real chaos, in, in my yeah. opinion, right? Like, but would Georgia's be, not going to stumble. Be so big. Would be so big. Because then, Ma I mean, then it – Yeah, because then it just – it shoes up Georgia and their options and what that looks mm -hmm. like. It basically means Georgia's in, I think, no matter what. Um, mm -hmm. Then we have a bunch of these one-loss teams. There's only a handful of unbeaten teams. Like, yeah. And, and quite frankly, it's always difficult to play. I mean, I guess Alabama – Two years ago, struggled, and then last year they did their thing. But yeah, um, we've seen a fallible Alabama team. Although I have to say they've just gotten literally better week after week after week after week. I've seen plenty of Alabama teams that don't cover, you know, a fifty-five point spread. They did it last week pretty easily. Um, I don't know, uh, but you're right. This is the only kind of way to stumble. But you see Mizzou there in nine. What the fuck? <laughs> you you I you cannot convince me Mizzou is a top. 10 team after struggling against Florida. And I, and then it finally all clicked to me. I was kind of coming around. Mm -hmm. We obviously we bet what the model told us to bet. We bet, you know, Florida against that game. And finally the fourth time we bet against Mizzou, we cover. Um, but then I thought, Oh, Mizzou is just overperformed. Like they're just an overperforming team. This isn't, this isn't like some crazy thing that like, what do we, oh, like we're missing something. No, we're not missing anything. They've just overperformed. If we reflect back, how did they beat Kansas State? They kicked a 66 yard field goal right, breaker right. record. Okay. They they don't beat Georgia. They just cover against Georgia. Okay. This Georgia team has, you know, had multiple teams cover against them. They don't beat LSU. They barely beat um um uh, Florida. And then they beat um a Tennessee team. And if you go back. There was multiple turnovers in the red zone um, from Tennessee. And I mean, you can you can kind of say, OK, well, there's their one true win. So I'm calling BS on Mizzou. I, I, I'm back. I'm back firmly in in uh, the pole position here of where I believe Mizzou is. And that's just dog shit. Hey, 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 yeah. hey, I'm, I'm actually going to Missouri this weekend just to just to, to piss on the Missouri the land myself just to just to make sure they know how i feel well we probably won't hear too much chirping from their fans i mean they they're, they're gonna they're gonna beat arkansas this week but like that's, are they i mean are they yeah they're gonna be they're gonna beat arkansas yeah it's not what that's i heard pretty okay well 
If they I do, no, then, no I, then what? Yeah, I think this is an over over overperforming team. Do they deserve to be nine? Maybe, but they're not the ninth best team. Um, in fact, I don't think they fair. deserve to be nine. Um, they basically beat Tennessee. Um, and yeah, I don't know how much that's actually worth. Um, but anyways, let's, let's, I guess what else? I mean, the SEC. Yeah, you're right. There's not a lot going on in that. Yeah. Uh, there's there's three or four major storylines as far as but, the CFP but Georgia Tech, implications go. Georgia Tech has given Georgia a hard time. We don't even have to go back one year. They they almost they were they were it was tied at half last year. So Georgia Tech can give Georgia problems. And Georgia Tech has been a very interesting team this week or this year. I'm sorry, this this season. They shit. Go back to week one, week zero. This is a team that was beating Louisville. Yeah. Yeah, interest. I mean, got smoked by Ole Miss. Yeah, I, I haven't. I guess I'm. I'm not recalling what what Georgia Tech's interesting season is. They beat, yeah, a, a, a not good Miami team really anymore. Um, underperforming, well, disappointing North Carolina team. They beat. Yeah. Um. I mean, that's a big win for for uh, Georgia Tech beating beating UNC. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. But okay, yeah. I mean, I I could see. I could feel the cover. I could see a cover coming, but. Uh, beyond beyond maybe like a half maybe like a tied for half. a half type of thing yeah tied at half or like definitely covering the first half spread or something um in state rivalry yeah. i'm just you know it, it, it it's rivalry the beauty. i mean it's, it's the beauty uh, most rivalry. bets are off most most yeah. bets are off when it comes to uh when it comes to these type of things in rivalry week so um all right yeah we we've we've been kind of flipping back and forth uh talking about it but but let's just give this one one good uh, a good once over here. So updated CFP rankings against again our rankings and Massey Peabody's rankings here. So um this is gonna be so they have how many more times, how many more weeks will they do this? They'll so do this after next week and then championship week in this. So there's two more rankings. Does that sound right? Yeah. So after next week we'll get the rankings before championship week. Yep. And then it'll be it should be final. And then it'll be a final one after that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, we kind of talked about the various teams positioning and stuff, so not, not really. I mean, the only interesting one for my, my money is, and again, if we talked about it last week, but why, um, why the committee and maybe it's just recency bias thing. They beat a good Oregon state team, but why has the committee maybe overvalue or is overvaluing Washington versus Oregon? How can you say they're overvaluing a team? They beat they beat uh, the number six team on this graph, and they beat uh, they beat Oregon State last week, which is a top twenty five team. Who did Florida State beat last week? Yeah, North something. Eight, Alabama, an FCS North Alabama, team. Yeah, and they mm-hmm. lost Jordan Travis. So I don't. Even, if you don't even have to acknowledge Jordan Travis, you have to move. How do you not move Washington forward off that win? That's a that is a top <clears throat> twenty five win. That's another top twenty-five win. That's all you know on top of the resume where they're throwing. You're seeing Arizona at fifteen. They beat Arizona. Um, you know they beat Oregon, number six. They beat Louisville. I, uh, they beat um, Oregon State. I think Oregon State is like nineteen or something like that. Like, yeah. I mean that. I, I to me that's not a stretch. I think they should have always been four, in my opinion. The Pac-12 is way has been way more competitive. Mm-hmm. Okay, well then maybe that was the wrong. So said differently, okay, or maybe to a different point is all those impressive wins. Who ha- do they have as or more impressive resume than the three teams ahead of them right now? Yeah, I, honestly, I, I would say Washington has a, a more impressive resume than Georgia. Honestly, I mean, I just like and, and here's the, I think here's the problem, you know. I think Pac-12, and we don't know what goes to the actual CFP ranking, right? We, we have an idea, but we don't know what the actual secret sauce is. But I think Pac-12's historical lack of dominance, lack of being yeah. a strong conference when it comes playoff time, definitely hurt it. But, I mean, you can't you can't tell me that – I mean, this, the resume stuff just listed off, right? You know, we always talk about – everyone says, oh, Michigan's never played anybody. Georgia going into SEC play and through it had the 100th – uh, hardest schedule, right? So they're towards the easiest schedule um, uh, uh, in, in, in CFP or in, in um, uh, F- FBS, right? But no one talks about that. And, and I get that. Listen, I'm not saying SEC is a, a, a cupcake by any means, but 
Washington objectively has had the harder schedule in terms of ranked opponents and competition, and they just made it look so easy. So I'm with you. I don't quite – I'm not saying Washington's better than will beat Georgia if they play each other today. I'm just saying they've had the more impressive resume based off who they played. But I push back on that. Literally, you can see two data-driven processes, ours and Massey Peabody. They're the best team. So yeah, but we all know that's fine. No, don't <laughs> <laughs> so to strength the schedule, all that kind of all that stuff is put in there, and yeah. you, you still get to you get to a Georgia team as the, the best team. So I think that is the level of I, I agree with everything you said, though. I mean, there I think there is, and I I honestly think there should be a respect for SEC play. Like it it has historically mm-hmm. been the strongest conference. And I think you have to go with that stronger signal. It, you're probably right that overall the Pac-12 has been stronger overall, but I think that's it. Just feels like it's just it's it's kind of an ex- easier acceptable thing. Like the SEC is the toughest league. If you're winning and you're undefeated in the SEC, you should be in the playoff. And I I tend to agree with that. Yeah, and I and I don't disagree with that by any stretch of the imagination. I think to me it's just it's it's inconsistent and kind of illogical. If if part of it, and again, I don't know, right? We don't know, but if part of yeah. that is your own ranking by your, I mean, you know, the college football, right? AP top twenty five, whatever ranking system is being used to evaluate this, it almost seems like it's like okay, we we're going to disregard that for Georgia in a positive way, like we're not going to let that hurt them. And we're going to disregard it for Washington in a negative way, as if we're not. But they have Washington in the playoff much. now, so how can we say they're, they're yeah, about the damn time? It's, it's <laughs> only the third week. Also, this is the other thing too. This is the national championship. This, this is the, yeah. the the returning national champion. How do you how do you leave them out? I think you ha- until they lose. I think you have to say they were the best team last year. They're probably the best team still until we have some reason to believe they're not. Um, or they at least should be in the playoff. Um, maybe they're, you know, one through yeah. four. Um, I just, the Mizzou, this is crazy. And I, I almost to your point, Steve, the Mizzou, I feel like Mizzou is nine just so that they can say the SEC was strong this year. Same with Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Tennessee keeps mm-hmm. losing, keeps losing, keeps losing. They're in the top 25. What the fuck? LSU. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll get put LSU in a different box just because they're scoring. Their their mm-hmm. offense is pol- perfect. What? Prolific? Prolific. The word. Whatever that word <laughs> is. It's fucking really good. They're throwing bombs. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I have to say, like, to your point, like, I do feel like they're they keep putting in these SEC teams in the top 25, but they, they're not winning or they or they, they yeah. barely win. They barely beat Florida. What? I, Mizzou is not a top 10 team. I'm sorry. They're just not. Yeah, Try, I'm, I, I want to point counterpoint you, but but we we've talked about this a couple of times over the course of the season that there there is there seems to be a little more parity or a little more mess in the middle, if you will. Like there's no incredibly maybe there's one or two really dominant teams, but then and then there's everybody else that's not really there's not a huge oh. a bunch of separation. Oklahoma is better than than Mizzou. Louisville's better than Mizzou. Fucking Penn State's yeah, wow. way better than Mizzou. Notre Dame is better than than Mizzou. Um, if we put Notre Dame head to head with Mizzou, Notre All Dame right. that spreads a seven point spread right. minimum for for right. in in direction of Notre Dame. Like this is this is just this is nonsense. Okay, but I mean, yeah. Point. I mean, la- last point I'll make is oh, I didn't even if see if we Old just got- still at twelve. What the fuck are we talking about? <laughs> we just got done saying that. I mean, I think it was you, Seth, who said, you know, they're just you, inflating you just... it. They're just putting teams in here so they can be so they can look at Alabama and Georgia and point to the end, like, look, the top 25 wins. Did like, you not did you not just say earlier that you like you gotta respect the SEC like they're the most dominant division? Sure, so. I agree, and I stand by that, but these teams, their rankings are not appropriate rankings. Like put them in the, right. tw- the 20 to 25. How can you tell me that Ole Miss is the twelfth best team in the nation? Well, yeah, you know, you know, what this feels like it feels like self just uncovered the biggest conspiracy of all time, and you know, we might not see, we might not see stuff next week. We, we might, <laughs> stuff might get snatched up here. But I, I agree with everything you just said. So we gotta make sure we post this yeah. before uh, it's too late. Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't want to go to Missouri. You might <laughs> oh, I'm going. Back. I'm going. Oh, I'm making. I'm making it back. I'm gonna get me a shirt. Just so I can uh, wipe my butt with it. 
Oh, what do they say, up. Mizzou? Go Mizzou. Go Tigers. Right. They, they they jacked LSU saying. <laughs> oh, do they? I don't know. I have no idea. Talk about parity no in the days. SEC. There's three Bulldogs. Really? Georgia? Mississippi I, I State? Know, Mississippi State? And... and there's the third one. I don't remember what it is. This Baby. doesn't. It's not good for. Uh, this is. Oh. This is not good podcasting. But yeah, no, I promise right. you, there's three. All right, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> all right, let's let's jump ahead. We got we got we got matchups to break down. But let's 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 recap real quick the uh, week twelve week twelve uh, model predictions here. So back in the win column, um, overall eleven and eight. So brings the year to date record now to seventy four and sixty six. Um, She's yeah, just I, ever I mean, so slightly profitable, baby. Ever so slightly, hey, profit is profit. Yeah, but we're we're you're right. Ever, ever so slightly, but we're still we're still we're still there, baby. So the one that pissed me off again, and this is the second time in I think two weeks where we've been on them, Michigan against um, Maryland, with the that that one hurt, and then they were, they got backdoored again. Who who was it they played? They played Purdue or um, uh, Maryland? Wait, who no, did Michigan? You? Michigan a couple weeks ago. Oh, oh, oh yeah, Purdue. Yeah. They got backdoor. Was it Purdue? Purdue? Yeah. This yeah, was not yeah. a backdoor. <laughs> this is it a wasn't, front door, no. side door. This is almost. It loose. wasn't even close. That was a weird yeah. game. Yeah. It really was. Yeah. So that one, that one, I yeah, I feel good about that one going in. But yeah, I, weird shit happens. Uh, um, beyond that, beyond Liberty. that, we got we got backdoor on Liberty. Uh, okay. It was literally the last play of the game. And then, did you guys see the Syracuse game? No. Oh. Okay. Oh, then let me just walk me you through this, baby. So Syracuse, Georgia Tech, pretty close game. We were not. I think we had six point spread. So uh, they were winning. Uh, Georgia Tech was winning by twelve. It's like four minutes left in the fourth. Just methodical. Boom. Syracuse down the field. Down the field. Easy peasy. Score a touchdown. Three minutes left. Georgia goes down the field quickly. Like within a minute, they get the ball back. Two minute warning. I'm watching this. I'm like, okay, this, okay. Like we just went down the field. We just did this. <laughs> they announced what? Like, oh, this is interesting. They're putting in the, like a true freshman to like get him reps, I guess. in the two minute warning, like this is the first pass this guy's thrown all season. I'm like, okay, well shit, that sucks. But you know, Hey, well, you know, like, Hey, let's see what this kid can do. Like, you know what I mean? We all got to start somewhere. Literally, I cannot exaggerate this. The And I am not. The first down, first play, this kid drops back three steps and just throws the worst pick you could ever see in your life and just de- DOA. And we end up <laughs> losing by it by 12. But I, if they would have left their starter in, they, we would have, we would have covered that game. But it was the funniest thing. I'm thinking like, okay, this bet is totally alive. We could go right down. Just first pass, boom, pick. So that was more funny, honestly, than anything. And yeah. then you kind of called us out last week. Why we bet Kent State? I don't know. I have no idea. So we're not betting Kent State ever again. <laughs> yeah, fair. I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah, I was again. I, I didn't get to join you guys on the on the openers last Sunday, but when I saw that, I was like, yeah, yeah. So that whatever. was the that was the travel fog, the COVID fog, and then Auburn. Auburn paid. New Mexico State one point eight million dollars oh, to play yeah. that game in Auburn and then lost. Like how? Yeah. How do you do that? That much that in the off season, that is one thing I'm looking into. This whole look ahead, I want to tr- I want to see data that shows how powerful this thing is. But I have to say, there's a lot of uh, spots in history where you look back and they, and think, dang, like that looks mm-hmm. to be pretty powerful. I, assuming mm-hmm. that's what's actually going on, you'll never know that. But sure. Um, how do you like yeah. you're you're superior to and that then, team on yeah. in every level? This is an Auburn team that almost beat Georgia. And then any potential bleed over effect that that has on on the same team, you know, when they're looking quote unquote looking ahead, yeah, to um, whatever rivalry they got. So yeah, um, okay, all good. Eleven and eight though, like I said, so so in the green officially for the week. So we move on. It is rivalry week. Rivalry week. That's really hard to say. But like yeah. we mentioned, so let's let's break down a few of these key matchups here. Mostly them. Mostly a lot of the ones with uh, CFP implications for sure. So um, first one up is Florida State and Florida. Our number says it's seven. Model output was seven. Obviously, huge, huge, huge caveats with both yeah. 
teams in both situations. Mm-hmm. Backup quarterback. It's the I think they call it the Sunshine Showdown. So you got Ooh, backup I signal like callers that. in the Sunshine Showdown, baby. So let's Ooh. let's see what happens. I don't know. But like, you, this number were, go. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, good. I was just gonna say um, this number was eleven and a half before the injury news came out, and so. Once Jordan Travis got hurt, a few moments later, honestly, <laughs> uh, Graham Mertz gets injured and is out. And then the line, you know, line goes blank for a couple of days and opens back up at seven and a half. I don't know what to think about this game, but obviously, who who do you guys think has more to play for? Because I think it's Florida. I agree. And I was just going to say, whoever that backup was at Florida was putting on a show against Mizzou. He was running all over the, them. And I mean, that could be... Pretty detrimental here. We we've talked about it all season. That blue chip ratio for for Florida, they have talented guys, no doubt about this. I would be really scared if um, I'm Florida State and uh, we're no bet. I did it. Did it open up at seven and a half or seven? Because I don't remember seeing any seven and a halves. I was like looking that, that earlier hook. today. Mm, yeah, there was. I was looking earlier today. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Circa. Maybe I might have, might have been looking gotcha. at it. Gotcha. I mean, book, point but. being here, you're like whether it opened at seven, seven, or if yeah. it opened at seven and a half, like it didn't last long because that seems like a good bet. Like that hook seems really important for this game. Yeah, and no, I'm, I'm confirming right now it, it opened truly at seven at Circa. Okay. Gotcha. But I mean, and and if it, if it did open at seven and a half, it would have been, it would have been yeah. a lickety split mm-hmm. bought up. So. I know. Florida, Florida needs this win to be bowl eligible. I mean, obviously, FSU needs this win in order to be even remotely considered for the playoff still, right? So, uh, but, but do you, you got to want to be like, I, that's kind of what I, I was going to, I think I was about to what I was going to say. Like, if you're in, the, if you're a player in that locker room, a coach, like you, you're going to say all the right shit, but deep down in your soul, you feel it to your core, baby. You're like, our season is just fucking over. Yeah, I've been 21 before. Like, I'd be like, this is stupid. I don't even want to play. Like, I, like, I would not judge anybody in that locker room if they could just be like, hey, we're done. Like, it's, I honestly wouldn't. Like, you can, you're right, Kevin. Like, you can give me some whole, like, song and dance about why you got to fight for your brothers and da da da. But I don't think it's the truth. Like, I think you can say all those things and those are all nice to say, but you win this game against Florida and somehow you end up in the playoff. You, you're not psyched to be in the playoff. This is like when um, – who's the head coach of uh, LSU? Kelly? Oh, after Ed. After Ed uh, uh, yeah. Um, Brian, Brian Kelly? Yeah, so yeah, Brian Kelly, yeah. remind, remind, rem, uh, reminder, he left his playoff Notre Dame team. He's just like, fuck you guys, I'm out. I'm going to take this LSU job. Have fun in the playoffs. This is the head coach. He's like the G- the job only comes once in a lifetime. You you tell me you couldn't negotiate like oh look I'll take the job just let me coach one more week. No he's no I'm good. So I mean we've seen this kind of thing before in, in college culture. I, I I'm I'm with you here. I don't I think this is a much much bigger win now to Florida than it is Florida State. Yeah. Yeah I, I don't I I don't know I'm I'm I, I'm, I'm halfway listen I, I agree with you I, I did I, they're definitely deflated right I mean. The national championship in the bowl game, even the year six, are just different leagues, obviously. But you know, you've got this it's Florida State team; they they've come so far, and uh, you got these seniors who are not going to want to leave empty-handed. So I think they're still going to rally. They're going to play. Now, can Florida get up for one game? Yeah, I'm totally with you. This is a game of unknowns, and I would not be shocked to see Florida win this game. But I don't know if Florida State's going to pack it in, not be excited for a bowl game. I think they're just fucking deflated. From not gonna not making a CFP because that that's that's official. Say what you want, that's official. Yeah. Okay. Another yeah. interconference rivalry, though. Same two conferences, ironically. So ACC and Louisville. Uh, excuse me, ACC and the SEC matchup. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you have Louisville and Kentucky here. So our number says it's eight. Uh, opener was at seven. So no alpha from a, from a modeling standpoint. But again, th- this is all about louisville's opportunities and chances yeah. to, to make some noise in the call in the in the cfp so they have to take care of business it's the governor's cup baby i know I, I i looked that up i was like i this is what's the name for this rivalry fucking governor's yeah. cup that's pretty fucking lame just saying I don't know. <laughs> maybe i don't appreciate history or whatever that's about but um 
Yeah, I mean this this is Louisville obviously cannot stumble here. They they, they have to they have to take your business handily. Yeah, I mean, listen, if, if you claim to be if you claim to be a championship DNA caliber team, you have to show for this game. You have to show up handling like that. Your your future is literally in your control. You are controlling your destiny here and Louisville can't afford to stumble. And honestly, I mean, I, you know, we look at the Louisville team who's come through and, and they've definitely have dominated, but we've seen them and they damn near lost a really bad Virginia team. So I really hope they get up for this moment. I would really love to see Louisville kind of rise from the ashes, but um, and by all sense, I mean, you look at every metric on here. I know it's not like a, a model play for us because the opening line and the spread and our model I'll put are, are so close together, but I'm looking at this team. Like this is, this is a game we will should dominate from start to finish and be motivated to do so. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, this is, this is almost the opposite of the, um, the game we just talked about in my opinion, which is, you know, Louisville has everything to play for here. Um, and I was actually, you were just talking about the, not a model play, and you're right, it's not. But I'm just taking a second here. If this thing gets by, um, yeah, if it gets to six and a half, there's a little bit of value, um, about a tenth of a percent EV in 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 the direction of Louisville. So not not a um, a great bet, but not a bad bet, right? If you're looking to get action down and you can see you can get a six and a half, it's probably not a bad bet to grab. Um, especially when the, this is this is going to probably be a good game. The one thing I will say is we've kind of called this when this happened. Kentucky started hot. They beat their non FCS and really low ranking FBS opponents. They basically didn't beat anybody since then. And everybody that was a good team, it was like almost their rite of passage to go beat the shit out of uh, Kentucky. So, yeah. I, I would imagine if Louisville says who they, you know, they are who they say they are, that they should follow suit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm with you. I think, yeah, I think so. So hopefully, hopefully, no hiccups for them. Yeah. All right. How about some Pac 12 action, baby? The oh, Civil man. War. All right. So Oregon State coming off that loss to Washington, um, going up against Oregon. Our number says it's 13. Opener was at 13 as well. So again, from the from a modeling standpoint, um, no alpha. I don't think the market has moved off of this much, actually. It's all yeah, over the you place. Can get 13 and a half and 12 13 and a half. And a half. Wow. You see a 12 and a half? Where? Uh, sharp. Or for, oh, okay. uh, the book normal, formerly known as Pinnacle is yeah. now Sharp book. <laughs> right. Um, and yeah. uh, I don't know. I want to. I, I, we The raw model number is 14, and I think that that's probably the right number. Um. I, I want to bet this game so bad. I want to believe Oregon's going to win by 21. But yeah, the, the rivalry, I think, changes the dynamic. And we, we look, we saw that Oregon State's a good team, but we saw when they play that. With, look, now when we, we've seen them go against the really, really top talent in the Pac 12, they've lost. We, I'll put Arizona in there. Yeah. We got Washington, Arizona, <laughs> and then now uh, yeah. uh, Oregon. So I think, you know, Oregon's more similar to those teams than, than, than not. If, in fact, I would put Oregon over both of those teams so I don't know this to, this to me those boys are humming up there man they just look this this to me is the Oregon version of Georgia two to three years ago like they and and the, the head coach is the old defensive coordinator from Georgia it just feels a very much like the, the the culture of Georgia where it's just like shut up do your job keep chopping wood kind of like this culture and they are and again I just yeah. come down to that fourth down why did they go for it I don't know I guess they felt very confident they could just put the game out there. But I that to me is what is making the difference here between an undefeated Oregon team and you know the the one loss team that we're looking at. And I think they I think they cover here. Um personally, I would love to get like a 10 or something like that because I think this would be a slam dunk bet. I don't think I'm gonna get it though. Yeah, I, listen, this is gonna be a purely subjective thing for me. And I'm I'm glad it's not a model play because I'm absolutely taking Oregon State on the on the uh, oh, okay. And it's not and it's not just because I want the the anarchy and the chaos for Arizona, right? This just these rivalry games not are so damn unpredictable. And listen, Seth, I completely agree. Everything you said is objectively factual. Oregon has been the better team, and they have they have made Mince meat of their their of their opponents all year long, with the exception of Washington, and they really yeah. could have won that game, no doubt about it. So yes, Oregon statistically, I test, however you want to measure it, they are the better team. But there is just something about these games where 
two touchdowns. And then this is not. This is at 13. That's very key, right? And this was, yeah. I was just checking right now, it was at 14 for a hot minute, and Ooh, it got bought down yeah. to 13, right? So too much I think value. 14 really is that key number. I think that's a lot here. I'm rolling the dice a little bit, I think, but I, I think 13 is just too many points in a rivalry game, like of, of this magnitude. Yeah, so look, I think I think the um to win the national championship numbers are up now. Ooh. Um, if you want to check on FanDuel, I'm I am seeing a plus one hundred thousand for Arizona. So I think Steve, if to be responsible on your on yeah. your take, no, no, I yeah, I agree, but then I think you gotta take it one step further. Let's see if the we can outsmart the books here. Can you okay. parlay that with a money line Oregon uh, Oregon State win? Because in order for them to go to the playoff, Oregon State has to win. Right, 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 so right. So can you parlay okay. whatever's going to be plus money, whatever on the plus money line for Oregon State, which has to happen in order for the playoff ticket to even right. be valid, and you're going to get plus 100,000 with whatever. I don't know. What What do you think Oregon money line is? Plus 250? Yeah, that's a great question. No, pl- we're talking like plus 400. Dude, you... You could you literally will own FanDuel. <laughs> Look at me. I'm FanDuel now. <laughs> oh my gosh. The first thing we're doing, we're buying DraftKings and we're fucking unlimiting me. <laughs> <laughs> which which ironically oh. be a, a, a terrible business move because we're winning you're in too much CLV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fair, fair, fair. All right. I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I can't help but I can't help but see the twinkle in your eye with this one, Steve. You know, this wishing, is, hoping on the on the U of This a is this is the, yeah. This is degenerate well, uh, like folklore. Yeah, I yeah. Listen, listen. I, I to, to to the viewers. I want to be absolutely clear. This is Steve, the emotional degenerate gambler. But when I keep locked up in the basement six days out the week. All right. This is the guy who, this is not financial advice. This is not gambling advice. This is just me wanting, me having a dream. You know, me being a little boy, wanting to see Arizona win something in my lifetime. That's all it is. Uh, shout I out. Hey, you got, I got to respect it, though. I can't find it on, on FanDuel. That's right. Only well, Oklahoma if, and Iowa are uh, at plus. They only have, if it's, at a, least if it's a possibility, if it's a possibility, we'll make sure to, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it. For sure. <laughs> okay. I mean, this is not it's kind of saving the best for last, in my opinion, or at least the one with some of the biggest implications, perhaps. The game. The game. Ohio yep. State and Michigan. So our number says it's minus five in favor of Michigan opener. Um, excuse me. Our number says it's minus four in favor of Michigan and the opener with that five. Um, so a little bit of value on Ohio State. And the um, opener, the opener moved that number, inflated that number. Our true raw model number puts this number at two. So this is a true coin flip game, and you you can see there was value at five for Ohio State in in, mm-hmm. in betting that, and it didn't last long. It did not. So it's currently at the uh, you see you see this shot there from earlier for, at about three or three and a half, um, depending on where you're looking. So not not sure how we can hype this one up a ton more, but I'm gonna no. we're gonna try. Okay. Um, I think I'll give you I'll give you I guess my take first on who I think wins this game, um, and then take it even one step further than that. So I think Michigan wins this game, um, and I think the winner of this game wins the national championship as well. I wow, you have a similar yeah you have a similar you're you're on Oregon for that take. I'm I'm on the winner of this game wins the national okay. championship. So okay. I think it's Michigan, um, and largely due to one side of the football. And how dominant Michigan is, and how o- Ohio State, for also having a good and solid dominant defense, the caliber, excuse me, the caliber of teams that they've gone up against at this point, with respect to Penn State, who is still very, very good defensively, this okay. is this is otherworldly type of competition that Ohio State's going up against here. So, point. Let me let me break it down further here. So, Kyle McCord, um, quarterback for Ohio State. I think he's going to be seeing ghosts basically this this coming weekend. So, looking at some of his splits, which are just you know taken taken with a grain of salt type of thing, but he's only thrown four picks this year. All four have come on the road. Okay, they're at Michigan this week. I think McCord's going to throw at least he, not at least, but I think he throws two picks. Um, that he's going to get pressured. That Ohio State offensive line is 
slightly above average at best. And Michigan is one of the top in the country at generating pressures. Okay. Okay. And McCord, for also for what it's worth, he like his pick a metric. I don't care. EPA per play, yards per attempt, completion percentage, all of it plummets under pressure. When he's got a clean pocket, he's 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 solid, very serviceable, sure. very okay. very good. But at the rate at which Michigan generates pressure at a very high clip, and then the 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 stark difference in who Kyle McCord is under pressure, I think is going to be the difference in this game. I don't think Ohio State will be able to keep up. I think Michigan ground and pounds them to death, and I would not be surprised if this ends up being a, a two score affair. Damn, I I. Don't disagree with any of that. The only question I have for you is how do you what do you make of the Penn State game versus uh, Ohio State? So this is a defense that is one of the best in the country, can get pressure, can kind of do all of those things. And Ohio mm-hmm. State, I won't say I definitely will, will concede here. They didn't have like a, some crazy game where they were slinging the ball all over, but they ended up they didn't on the box score win by two possessions, but they were winning by two possessions. I mean, he was able to kind of get out alive there. In your mind, is Michigan that is it in the next level to to Penn State. I mean, the, there it's it's definitely like a tier one, tier two type of thing. And admittedly, there's probably not a, a precipitous drop between the two tiers. So, yeah. so no, it's not otherworldly. But I think any 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 side by side you want to do with the two, for as good as Penn State is, Michigan is better. Just by just by a smidge in almost every category, so you yeah. compound that all across the board, and I, and yeah, and I and I don't, I, I think it's gonna and ultimately just be too much. Fair, Steve is the uh, the Harbaugh not having Harbaugh on the sideline a big deal to you? Yeah, and I, I want to start by saying, Kevin, you couldn't be more wrong. Ohio State's absolutely covering this game. Ohio State's winning this game. Let, let's just let's just call a spade a spade here. So um, covering yes, and when you say winning, they're winning. Okay. They're, they're winning out, right? Um, yeah, so it's hard not having Harbaugh here for this game, yes. Now, I now let me be fully transparent. I've sat here on this very show, and I've said, listen, Michigan shows up, and they win with or without Harbaugh. They've done it now five times, right? Yeah. You to start the year, the last two games, and you saw Maryland was a pretty close game compared to other ones. But this is Ohio State, Michigan. This is the biggest game of the year. This is their Super Bowl. Uh, Steve, this is I arguably think, more important. I don't mean to stop you, but I think you mean Michigan. No M's this week. <laughs> no M. If, yeah, yeah. Oh, they, they don't say M's at all the whole oh, week. For oh, State. Oh. They X out yeah, all the exactly. M's. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. If yes. you're gonna back no, Ohio I'm, State, I'm sorry, I think right. it's a proper yes. this is Michigan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Um, yeah, no, and so here's the thing, right? 45-23. That was the score of the last year game when Michigan went into Columbus and put an absolute beat down on Ohio State, and a lot of that was explosive plays that kind of came out of nowhere. Ohio State's not forgetting that. Harbaugh has come in, and he's won a few in a row. You don't think Ryan Day and the uh, the, the boosters and the alums and all the players know this? This is the revenge of revenge games, and there's no better time for this. So you see these two teams. They've been pretty much equal amongst all these stats as a team projection. You saw the playbooks out on how to stop McCarthy. I mean, Michigan, Michigan didn't throw the ball the entire second half effectively. So, and they, and, and yes, they won, but you can't do that against Ohio State. You can't become a yeah. one dimensional team against Ohio State. They're too good. That receiving core, Marvin Harrison Jr., is too good. This is a team that is going to absolutely physically beat the shit out of Michigan. And I have no doubts whatsoever Ohio State's winning this game. Yeah, damn. You guys have make some, some it's a house divided. Uh, yeah, for real. <laughs> I, all I can, all I, you know, I will say the biggest takeaway for me, and I, this is kind of left field for me because I do not bet this market is, I mean, the the both the thing you've both told me is these defenses are really, really, really good, and they've both kind of we've seen them do their thing against a really good defense in Penn State, and they in both of those games it wasn't crazy affair of scoring. <clears throat> is the is the under just like the smartest thing we can do? Mm. I, I have the same thought. This is this has gotten bought down a couple of points now. I think it yeah. was at 47 or 47 and a half. Sure. Yeah, um, it looks like 46, to, 46, yeah. 46 all 46, day. 46, 45 yeah. and a half. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so it's 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 inching down ever so slightly. So 
I, I'm I, I conceptually like the idea. Uh, I do, but uh, yeah, I, I I'm I don't feel strongly enough. With, yeah. With, with, on the, in that market too. Yeah, and I can I, I want to make a, oh, I'm sorry, a, a quick just clarification. JJ McCarthy didn't throw the ball the entire second half against Penn State. Now I said I said Maryland earlier with the Penn State game, so I was thinking of you know, and then you can't do that against Ohio. State. I don't know sorry, how the, I got I like the internet sleuths. Where are you all at? This is a lie. This is not true. They got like a they got a huge PI penalty by him throwing the ball. Yes. Now I know in the the box sheet it doesn't say he threw the ball, but he threw the ball, and that's how they got a huge first down. Um, I don't know how this keeps coming up. So I have to I have to push back on that one. So he did throw the ball. Yes, I understand it didn't, wasn't recorded, but it was a huge play in that game. Um, I, I tend to I tend to uh, I, I don't think either of what you said have been wrong. I just come back to this idea of one: you build a model, use it, and we see that there's a little bit of value on Ohio State. Now, in the, the situation's a little bit different, but we do put the true number at two. So let's just assume the true number is two. And, and not four here um because now we're we're literally working with as much data as you can get right we're literally working with a full season's worth of data there's one week left so i'm going to trust mm-hmm. the model there okay so we put the number at two you can get these three and a halves um and the thing i come keep coming back to is ohio state has just gotten a little bit better every week in fact they're just like the grown-up version of alabama this week or the the more put together version of it where they never really looked bad they just looked a little slow. You know, they didn't lose. They just like, okay, they came out and played Indiana slow. But week after week after week after week after week. And, I mean, if we bring this back to our power rating, where do we see? We see Michigan and Ohio State almost smack dab on each other. This is something that was not like that two weeks ago, um, three weeks ago, you know, even last week. But they've just gotten better and better and better and better every week. Um and I think for me, I, I I think that gives you know all of that together. I'm gonna take Ohio State, and I guess I, I you know, f Michigan. That's all I got to say. I'm I'm riding it. I'm gonna uh, I'm three and a half at this point. I'm late to the party. I'd love a four, um, but I yeah. think the if I believe the numbers two, um, let's just do that EV calculator. Shout out to our EV calculator on our website. Just go to our um, calculator page, and you can find that. If we believe that the true number is two and we can get a um, and we can get a three and a half uh, or four, three and a half. Um, just just real quick. Suspense is killing me. We're getting we're getting so many users to the website right now. It's moving a little slow. Um, uh, minus one ten. It's probably not quite there. I think I think it will. I think the three is 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 such a key. It's not as key as NFL. Yeah, yeah, that's a huge three percent EV. Assuming assuming that the true number is two, which is what our raw sure. number makes it, right? It, it gets inflated by that open of five. Um, so I'm you build a model, use it. Ohio State plus three and a half, lock it in for me. Okay, all right, let's go, baby. And go F blue. Michigan. I'm just kidding. No, 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 no emotional oh, dog in this one for me, but oh yeah, let's, I, I mean, just match up with the weekend. There's no two ways about it. It's going to be, yeah, it's no, gonna be yeah. either, either way. So, all right, let's look ahead though. Week 13 model predictions here. So pretty, um, pretty comparable volume relative in terms of like top to bottom where the value lies, yeah. but I think we only locked in and we'll, it will rattle them off here in a, in a minute. We, um, only about six or seven, I believe. Yeah, plays that uh, we were able to meet that meet the we criteria really, and that we were able to lock in. So, and and when we shopped a lot of these, they they really there wasn't a lot of options like there was before. And I, I don't, I, I was kind of wondering why that is, but yeah, I mean, it's somewhat of a light week, so to speak. Um, but I, I want to talk about uh, Penn State, Michigan. I, I, Steve, do you have the bets pulled up? I do. Yeah, you want to run through them? Uh, absolutely. All right, so. Uh, what we got for this week, we have Penn State minus 20. We have Georgia minus 23, Iowa min- or Iowa plus one and a half, Ohio Bobcats minus 13 and a half, South Alabama minus five and a half, Notre Dame minus 24, Cincinnati plus six, and Texas A&M plus 12 and a half. I 
I've already I've already tripled up on the Penn State, but this is the highest EV game we have seen all season. And I can't I hand up. I'm willing to go down with with the ship. I'm willing to go down with the model here. When we were talking a couple of weeks ago, how sure we were that Michigan was going to cover this spread against Penn State. And we couldn't mm-hmm. do anything to actually quantify that value. We're looking dead in the face of a bet that's saying there's a shit ton of value, specifically not going through that that 20, 20 and a half. There's one book, and I'm just gonna keep betting it every day until they they like i kind of go down with the ship but mgm and i you know i'm a little scared because it's it's a scary it's scary oh and now that i say that actually our best our good friends DraftKings, you can uh, get this is uh at draft as well 20 and a half <laughs> minus 112 um like i'm i'm gonna keep adding units i think i'm gonna get up to another three units on this game like this is one of the biggest EV bets we've seen. You can see where the raw model puts this 39. Now, yeah, what? I'm a little hesitant there because this offense isn't that high pace, but we saw what they could do last week. They could put up a lot of numbers um, and do it kind of quickly. And this is also against a, a Minnesota team that is a pretty slow paced team as well. So if they can do it in that environment, um, I think that they can do it against this environment. Um yeah, so I I'm I'm going down with the ship. And last week, gonna load up on an ignorant amount of uh, of of units. This is an official, Man. and this is official game of the year for me. Ooh, okay. We might have we might have the uh, first unofficial blow the board nuke of the season. <laughs> yeah, this is. Oh, it's been nuked. Uh, it's been nuked, and will we continue? This is. I dropped the Enola Gay. <laughs> The uh, I forget what the the other the other plan was called, but uh, the uh, this is uh, yeah this this is this is to me like you 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 can logically have a mo- mental model. This right. I the only thing is I'm just I've been going through the numbers of like trying to figure out why this team is so favored in this game, but I think it's just it's a combination of dominance and just. They're, they're dominant, and I mean dominant in every single category over Michigan State. Now, yeah. you can kind of fool yourself like, okay, you can go look at the box score, you know, little scores and say, okay, well, there's like a possibility. But there's a reason why we use play-by-play data, right? That's a mm-hmm. stronger signal than than the box score. So but you, can, you can still fall in love with this bet via box score, um, but it still doesn't get you quite to the, that 39. And is the true number 39? Probably not, but let's just assume. Let's just assume it's twenty three, and the true number is twenty eight. Or I'm sorry, the you can get a twenty and a half, and the true number is twenty eight. I mean, we're talking a yep. lot about. It. Yeah. The, so the only ones for me, or the only one that that kind of reeks a little bit for for me as far as the for this week's prediction is Cincinnati um, <clears throat> against Kansas. I I don't know, like Cincinnati's not really a good team frankly um and I, I think i mean i know kansas has their the the rip to the plus 5000 ticket and and all that type of stuff but this is still a very very dangerous team no matter who's under center um especially yeah, against okay. a really below average cincinnati team so i 6 just does not feel like it's enough i don't care it's, rivalry week or not yeah it's there's only one it's only been bought up to six and a half at circa it's still six everywhere else yeah. so so yeah i mean you know again so I'll, I'll i'll like your earlier point like you 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 have a model you you use it and you know, use it as your north star you know for for where the value is at so it is what it is but i just yeah this this one this one flies in my face a little bit i agree it, it's not a pretty one i don't like it um the other one too is virginia tech i was i was too afraid to take it and it's actually moved in the direction of, we that was two bets on me that, that I did that against uh, one with uh, was Wisconsin pick them at open and this uh Virginia Tech and they about now both moved so they're no longer bets so I don't know why I got the yips the last week but um the one <laughs> thing is uh the South Carolina bet maybe maybe moving in the direction for us to be able to bet it um there are now a couple seven well there's one seven and a half at our friends DraftKings um probably for a reason because they're willing to put up shitty lines shout out to them um and uh but it's only a seven and a half at bookmaker it's still seven everywhere else so shout out to all the people that can get money down at DraftKings. that seven and a half is probably a pretty good bet for south carolina just saying 
Always, yep. Yeah. So I mean, throughout the week, because all, all, so the ones that we rattled off, that Steve rattled off at the beginning, not every single one of those. The majority of them came on Sunday at opener, but there were a couple yeah. where we had to keep our ear to the ear to the streets, if you will. Really, and, they were um, all openers. The Kansas Cincinnati one didn't open until uh, like later that night for whatever reason. There was like four or five games that we didn't. So we haven't really yeah. been able to shop too much of these. I trust me, I've been trying to shop them. Um, right. I think maybe the Clemson one is the one we'll be able to get um, that that will probably because I think you just we need just need to get an eight. If we can get an eight, it'll be a bet for us. Um, I I did go ahead. I went off script. I'm not going to lie. Shout out. Um, I did go ahead and bet Tennessee um, because we missed it. I believe. Yeah, it was on here. Twenty four. Mm-hmm. We put the true number at twenty seven. I bet a twenty five. Um, because I'm going to just believe the true 27. And then yeah. now that's moved to 27. Um, it probably is not huh. going to move off that number. Um, so I cheated a little bit, or I don't know. I, I use the model, right? That's <clears throat> shout out to all the board members. We give you the data. You can kind of use it how you like. So that's the only other bet that I kind of went a little bit off script just to try to get a little bit more value. If this Tennessee team is so good, let's see what they can do against a, a Vanderbilt team. Okay. Yeah, and the the only one I'll I'll add a caveat to or I'll add on to real quick. So I, I, I maybe I did I don't remember texting this earlier, but it's not even on this card here. But if you're a board member or you just sign up for sign up to become one, you'll see it on the full output page. But Colorado against Utah, um, that's that's moved quite quite a bit now. It's opened at about at, open at eighteen and has now been bought up all the way to twenty two. So at wow. twenty two and and even some some offshore like uh bovada i don't know what bet online is but a couple of other obscure books you can get 22 and a half there is alpha now on colorado at that number who are um, they playing so utah so uh, i haven't is yeah there i injury? haven't is there an injury i well i haven't quite pulled the trigger yet i was gotcha. browsing the browsing the webs um sanders is he's got some he's got some issue where he i think he didn't practice yesterday but i don't i don't know gotcha. if it's Playing status is uh, technically in question yet or not, but for what that's worth, I'm keeping a close eye on that because it, that's yeah, at Utah. If, if, at Utah, senior day for Utah. Um, not quite rivalry week, I don't think, though, between these two. But maybe maybe I'm just ignorant. Don't know, but yeah. If if Sanders does play, I think this is a decent buy low spot, though. Frankly, um, yeah. And, and last much. last I saw, he, he so he did he came out the game against Wazoo, which was an absolute beat. Down, yeah, by was, the way. Um, and then last I heard bad, bad. earlier today was he wasn't he was doubtful for this game so that, that may be uh, okay uh, yeah yes. if that's it then then I would fire. I would fully fully stay away as your friend I would fully fully stay away if he was as healthy as he could be <laughs> <laughs> okay all right fair fair senior night at at Utah last game emotional season they've I think they lost like one game in the last like 30 games there. Colorado spiraling out of control. I don't know if it, yeah, I don't know if yeah. you could. You would have to go back to the first game of the season to be able to buy low enough. Yeah. I think in this spot. <laughs> fair. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. All right. So yeah, eight official eight official plays uh, on the week, um, and 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 one or two nukes as well. So um, yeah, we'll be, see. We'll be, see. yeah, bankroll management, all that stuff. Like, but yep. I just. Yeah, like, this is to me connecting the dots between trying to be, you know, a true professional, right? You can create a mental model and you think you have this edge, but yet you can't get you can't ever get the model to show you there's an edge. Then you got a, a bet you're staring on the pipe and you're saying there's a lot of edge here and you go look at all the data and it all backs it up. This to me is I got to I got to come with the same energy. Yeah, I hear you, man. Okay. Speaking of the same energy, though, I mean, rivalry week, like anything can happen. Dogs could potentially be barking. No Ooh. doubt about it, right? So to that or end. Beavers. Or b- dogs, beavers, whatever. Donkeys, bonk it. I don't know. Who's a donkey out there? So I'm sure they're barking, too. <laughs> I'm sure they are. So we want to do something a little different, um, do something a little new for you guys here heading into this week. So I'm um, doing a little segment that we're going to call Dog of the Week. So we got three three plays or three dogs that we want to highlight here individually real quick. So first one up, Jacksonville State yes, against sir. New Mexico State. So this me, was baby. this was Seth's Dog of the Week. So yeah. walk us you through see, your expectation. Yeah, opened at four. This thing is moving. Um, I just looked. 
I don't even I'm going to have to probably come up with a new dog of the week because now they're favored. Uh, this team is now minus two. Uh, oh, hey. And so I bet it I bet it earlier in the week um, at open and uh, it's flipped now to a favorite. So I think that's probably what you want to see from the dog of the week. Um, but the, obviously it's a small favorite um, here. But I, I just think Jacksonville this is a good spot for them. Really, really, really good defensively. Now, New Mexico has been a good team, but uh, I think this is probably one of the strongest defenses they're going to go up against. And I think Jacksonville State can definitely hold their own on offense. Um, I think we're talking a, a field goal game here one way or the other. Um, and let's just hope we're on the right side. You can get it no longer at plus 112. But uh, uh, this is uh, this was my dog of the week. I mean, it still is, but you just like you just fucking cherry picked it. It feels like now, now they're all of a sudden favorite. How convenient for you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's how I roll, you know. That's how that's how I like to do it, you know. That's uh, that okay. is uh, that is what you like to see CLV. Let's what, see if I can one hundred percent. See if I can find it. Um, because I had to bet this um on our favorite um our favorite uh book FanDuel because I can't get on DraftKings. There you go. Jackson Jacksonville State plus 112. Yep. <laughs> All right. There's no denying it. Or follow us on uh Picket app. Use code yeah, bully sign up. You'll get three yeah, bucks. It would have been on the Picket app. While you guys I go, I'll try to find I'll start. try to find another one though. I'm gonna get back All right. to All good. Now. All good. We got two more to get to here. So next one up is Arizona State going up against yeah. the University you of Arizona. This, yeah. You're, so you're th honest. this this is, you know, I I definitely did just want to like, you know, piss you guys off a little bit. So uh, that's okay. honestly part of it. But uh yeah, admittedly there's there's not a ton to point to analytically to suggest that I'm not I don't I'm not going so far to say that you Arizona State is going to beat U of A. I think they could cover, very much cover. Uh at least a backdoor here 10 and a half. So that's where the market's at. Uh, opener was at about 12. It's been it's been bought a little bit. So it's at 10 and a half currently. Um, a couple of just weird, interesting little tidbits. So okay. Kenny Dillingham and Jed Fish don't have a, an extensive history coaching against each other, but they do have they, they, they have gone up against each other as coordinators, as um, offensive um, uh, assistant head coaches, things like that over the years. Kenny Dillingham has Jed Fish's number, period, point blank. 2-0 against Jed Fish in his career. Okay, so... Back in 2016, when he was at Memphis, and then Fish was at um, UCLA, and then recently last year, Oregon versus uh, U of A. So Dillingham, Jed Fish, superior coaching. He, he just he's going to take it. He's he's going to he's going to figure out a way. That's right. just that's just like son. That's just one eh, side sidebar note. But one thing that was real and kind of material for me in this game was there. There is real good possibility not although not confirmed yet so a little bit of rule of a dice for me that asu is going to get their quarterback Jaden rashada back um this week mm. so if that's the case then i really like them to pull all the rabbits out of the hat so to speak and and, and really look to regain some of the early season uh efficiency here and then last but not least i mean just again territorial cup baby u of a has not won a tempe since 2011 okay and i don't i mean it's i was a there tough, for that Oh, shout out. Yeah, people threw <laughs> things at me. Yeah, Fair let's down. go. Good for you. Yeah. Um, so listen, this is this is a tough place to go to, you know, for for these two teams. I mean, they they oh, they, they always talk tough. about it's for for them, for the it's it's tough. If you ever went in a place since 2011 and you and you play the team every there every other year, it's tough. It's tough. Eh. So we haven't I'm had working, a football since 2011. The I'm boys working with fun. a couple of uh you know side side storylines, so to speak, with this one, but this is really, frankly, does all hinge on the fact that Rashada comes back. If he doesn't, then then uh, this is DOA, frankly. That's but fair. Um, and, yeah, if he does, no, um, uh, yo, no, no, uh, uh, no, fucking bear no, down. Bella, no bowl eligible either for ASU. So this is their bowl game. Yeah, you know, this is this, this is, is it. The this is the championship, game. and this is a team that has spoiled a lot of lunches. We've covered a lot of games against betting on ASU. So honestly, shout out to them. I I hope you don't cover this one, but. <laughs> I can I can kind of I can kind of see the angle. Sure. This game is sure. always weird. I will give you that. It is always weird. I'm that's that's basically what I'm counting on. I'm just counting on the weirdness to continue. So fair enough. All right, two dogs down, one to go. Last one up, we have um, NC State, baby. So Steve, talk us through this one. 
Yeah, State versus Carolina. You got two teams who are both eight and three, and they couldn't be drastically different. Listen, NC State is on an upswing. They got blown out by Duke, and ever since then, they have been on fire, five and zero. Oh. Doesn't matter if it's MJ Morris. Doesn't matter if it's Brendan Armstrong. This team has been looking fantastic, and quite frankly, North Carolina is just another one of those teams that, you know, run of the theme in the ACC is just they started off great. They've just been really disappointing. So. Um, I look at this game right here as th this really is being priced out. You see there, uh, NC State coming in at plus two, um, plus two on amount of output, plus two to opening spread. Uh, to me, NC State is the superior team as of late. They're rolling hot. And uh, quite frankly, I don't know what's going to happen, you know, with, with May and, and the Tar Heels, but this is just a team that is, I won't say uh, quite in disarray, like the house is not on fire, but, but they're, they're smoldering there. And there's just really – Nothing more left that, that I see North Carolina doing here. So give me the give me the the Wolf Pack, um, give me the the cover. But I have bet the money line, NC State Ooh. money line over UNC, um, State versus Carolina. State wins this one. They go to to nine and three. All right, dope. Let's do it. Let's let let's let the chaos commence. And I let's got really... my I got my replacement bet. Oh, Ooh. shout out. Let's do it. Okay. All right. I'm betting Ohio State money line. Let's go. Oh, let's That's number go. I can get is plus 145 on points bet. I'm betting it right now. Let's go. 145. Ohio State. OH. I O. Let's go. All right. That's a good. That's a good one. That's a good one. Dogs, dogs might be barking. At least uh, at least some of them. At least, at least the ones we chose, right? Yeah. <laughs> Selectively barking. How about that? Yeah, all dogs yeah. but Michigan State. I, as long as, if, if, if that's how this weekend goes, I'll be okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. All right. We said it. I mean, we can't hype it up anymore. Rivalry week is going to play out. We'll be back next week, breaking it all down, looking ahead to championship weekend and more. So thank you all for tuning in. It's been real. We'll be back next week. Kevin, Seth, and Steve, bully the board. We'll see you next time, everyone. Go bear down.